All right, let's look at each of these. So we have at the top of the stomach, we have the esophagus. And then working our way down, we have the stomach. From there, the stomach connects with the small intestine, starting with the duodenum. This little apparatus here is the gallbladder, which we know is actually nestled within the liver. And the gallbladder, of course, creates or stores bile. And then moving on down the line, we have the pancreas, which secretes bicarbonate into the duodenum to help neutralize the acid or the acidic chyme coming from the stomach. And then here, without any separation, uh, we have the jejunum and the ileum, which are the two other components of the small intestine. They link then to the large intestine at the ileocecal junction. So this here is the cecum, which is a blind ended sac, not very well developed in carnivores. And then we have the various aspects of the colon. And then down the line, we have the rectum, which is essentially for storage of fecal matter. And then lastly, we have the anus, which of course has the internal and external sphincters. Okay, looking at this one, what are the hooks called on this cat's tongue? Those are the papilla. So the various papilla, they look different with each species and they have different functions. For cats, these particular papilla are mainly in there or on there for grooming. Identify the hypsodont tooth and the brachydont tooth. A, the shorter profiled tooth is the brachydont. And B, the longer tooth that has continuous growth is the hypsodont. Identify A and B. A is the crown and B is the root. So the crown is what you see on the tooth and the root, of course, includes the pulp cavity, the nerves, and the blood supply. Okay, identify the following structures. So we've got the fundus, the body, this is the cardia region. This is the pyloric antrum, which you can refer to as the pylorus. And then let's see which areas of the stomach have a sphincter. So there's a sphincter in the cardia region. So cardiac sphincter and there's a pyloric sphincter. What is the function? Well, the cardiac sphincter prevents partially digested food and stomach acid from going back up the esophagus and the pyloric sphincter helps to regulate or control the amount of acidic chyme that's coming from the stomach into the duodenum. And the area of the stomach that expands the most when food is taken in is the fundus. It has a massive ability to stretch to accommodate food. So review the image on the right. What, it, what a condition is occurring in this set of diagrams? This is gastric dilatation volvulus. So what's happening, the stomach bloats, and then with a bit of gravity and the stomach swinging like a pendulum, it swings over itself and essentially it gets tied off at the esophagus and the pylorus. And that's of course an emergency surgery. And then this image here, so we've got the liver, which is one of the largest organs in the body, and the liver produces bile. And then here, the gallbladder stores the bile from the liver. Here we have the stomach, which again connects to the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine. We have the pancreas that also connects to the duodenum, as well as the gallbladder. So the gallbladder is secreting bile to the duodenum, and the pancreas is secreting bicarbonate. And together, bile helps to emulsify or break down fats, and the pancreas secretes bicarbonate to help neutralize that really acidic hydrochloric acid coming from the stomach. Identify each of these structures. We have the stomach. We have the pancreas, which kind of sits within the first fold between the stomach and the duodenum. And then we have the duodenum. Identify each of these structures. We have the right kidney, the left kidney, the ureters, and then the bladder. And just remember in most mammals, the right kidney sits more cranial than the left kidney. And then lastly, we also have the urethra, which I don't know if you guys can see. There we go. We have the urethra, which of course is the tube that brings urine from the bladder out through the penis or the vagina into the outside world. 
And here again, remembering that the right kidney in most mammals is more cranial than the left. So we have the right kidney, the left kidney, we have the left ureter, which is the tube that brings the urine from the kidneys down to the bladder. And then we have the bladder itself. We have the urethra, which again is taking the urine from the bladder to the outside world, the right uterine horn, and then of course the ovary, the right ovary. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see this one. Sorry, my screen is getting a little cut off. So we'll go through each of them. So each structure on the outside, we have the renal capsule, which is that protective membrane of the kidney. And then working our way down, we have the hilus, which is that funnel shaped area of the kidney that collects the products, which essentially is urine at this point and empties it into the ureter. The middle area of the kidney, sort of this middle layer that includes the renal pyramids is called the medulla. And then we have the renal cortex, which is the outer thickness of the kidney. And this, of course, is a nephron, and the nephron is the most basic functioning unit of the kidney. So, of course, blood comes in through the glomerulus and then gets circulated around. So this is the glomerulus. This is the proximal convoluted tubule working down to the loop of Henley, and Henley is a name. It's a name of the person who discovered it. So the capital, or the H is always capitalized. And then it works its way up through the distal convoluted tubule down to the collecting duct. And here we have ureter, of course, bringing urine from the kidneys down to the bladder. We have the bladder itself, and then we have the urethra. And of course, this is a male dog. You can tell because the urethra is that backward C shape. As well, the penis is sitting on the ventral aspect of the abdomen, pointing cranially. Here we have the left kidney, which is sitting more caudal. We have the right kidney, which is sitting more cranial. We have the bladder. We have the right ureter, which is bringing urine from the kidneys to the bladder. We have the prostate, which is an accessory gland, which adds fluids to the, the semen, the sperm and it hugs the urethra at the base of the bladder. We have the urethra, and this is a male cat. Okay, so this structure here, those are turbinates, and if you recall, those are those very, very thin scroll-like bones within the nasal passage, and they are covered in a nice uh, mucous membrane covering, so a nice uh, mucosa, essentially. And the purpose is that they warm and humidify air as it works its way in through the respiratory tract. So looking at each structure here, shift this above slightly. So we've got the epiglottis, which is the trap door that either opens to allow air to enter into the trachea or it closes so that we can swallow food or water. We have the larynx, which is also includes the vocal cords, but that's essentially the entrance to the respiratory tract. We have the trachea, which remember we have those hyaline cartilage rings that are in an almost complete circle, but not quite complete circle. And they maintain an open structure of the trachea. And then where the trachea branches into two, that's called the bifurcation of the trachea. And then here we have a bronchus. I didn't label this left or right. This is likely the left bronchus, but this would be the left bronchus. This one would be the right bronchus. And remember when we're talking about more than one bronchus, then we use the term bronchi, but singular it's bronchus. And then we have down here, the alveoli. And the alveoli are those tiny little grape-like structures and they are responsible for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide to the blood. Okay, and here we go. We have a testicle. Identify each structure and what is the function of each structure. So we've got the vas deferens, which is the... Actually, let's start here. So we have the seminiferous tubules, which is the location of uh, oogenesis in the male. So that is where sperm is created. 
and then it makes its way down through the rect testes into the epididymis, and the epididymis is this large structure. We have the head of the epididymis, the body, and then the tail curves back up the other side. So the epididymis, the function there is to store and mature sperm. And then once the sperm are stored and matured, they, wake, they make their way down through the epididymis, and then they get pushed into the vas deferens, or the, deferen, the ductus deferens, depending on what you read. And in the vas deferens, the purpose is to propel the sperm into the urethra. Identify each structure. What is the function of each structure? So we have the acrosome, which has enzymes to help penetrate the female egg and allow for implantation within the egg. We have the head, which is the location of the genetic material. We have the midpiece, which has many, many, many mitochondria, which is essential for energy production. And then we have the tail, which allows for locomotion. So forward motion is the goal. And here, if you can see the image, it's a very light image. What is this? Well, we've got the prepuce, which is the covering, the skin covering to the penis. I'll just push that, oopsies, up a little. So you have the opening of the prepuce to the penis. You've got the shaft within that. And then you have these two bulbous structures here. And then continuing on, you have two testicles. So right here, that is the bulbous glandus. And remember that that plays a role for dogs, when they're mating, that allows them to tie together. So it allows the penis essentially to get stuck inside the vaginal canal to ensure that the male dog has the best chance of their sperm making it to the female reproductive tract. And then here we have the female reproductive tract. We have the oviduct, the ovary, the uterine horn, and the body of the uterus. So the oviduct is the site of fertilization. The ovary is where the egg is produced, so oogenesis occurs. And the uterine horn is the site of implantation. So the uterine horn is where the zygote starts to grow and becomes a, an embryo and a fetus over time. And that is the location where puppies or kittens would develop in the dog and cat. The body of the uterus, that's more... I think that's the site of implantation for, or, um, yeah, implantation for humans, but not for dogs and cats. So the body of the uterus is essentially just a passageway where the sperm makes its way up through and then up toward the oviduct for fertilization. And that is it.